Welcome to Midweek Talks, where we help you follow Jesus and answer your questions in the middle of personal, social, and cultural issues. I'm your host, Mark Ivey, and today we've got some amazing students with us. Hey, guys. And what we're going to be doing over the next number of weeks is we're going to take a dive into current events and the book of Revelation. So you may want to share this with some people. You may want to let individuals know what we're doing because hopefully you're going to hear some information that you have never heard before, but that will help us in the times that we're living in. Okay, guys, I'm going to ask you a question. With everything that is going on, or maybe you don't think anything's going on, okay? So let's get, get a perspective there, okay? What is your thinking about current events, about America, about the world, particularly what we've been through maybe in the last year and a half with um, COVID and other things? How are you feeling? What are you thinking? Or if you're thinking anything at all about stuff. I'm thinking that, like, everybody's so stressed out and is so consumed with, like, the lies of the enemy and that they just can't see past, like, all the blinding, like, of the government. Like, they're so concerned with politics that they can't see what the Lord wants to do within their hearts and within the churches. You guys agree with that? Okay, so, like, uh, we're consumed with things that are right in front of us, maybe, and we're not really seeing what's, what's really going on. What, what else? What else? What else you feeling or thinking? Um, I feel like everybody's in rebellion and... Okay, what do you mean by that? Like, even if they don't know the Lord, they're still like... It's not even just like doing like things that aren't good. Like, it's literally against the word. Like, it's against it. And it's not... Even if they don't know it, that's why it's so clear that it's like, it's the enemy. You know? But they don't know it? Yes. Okay. What else, guys? I think it's very frustrating for me to see how... Like, all the dumb things that go on, like pronouns um, huh. and all the other <laughs> stuff that they believe in. All that crazy stuff is very frustrating. And why is it frustrating to you? Because what's the point of all of it? We make everything so complicated. Like, why do you need to they slash them, you know, all that? It's, it's no point of that. And, like, everyone's so blinded and they can't see that it's pointless. It's not needed. So... So, so let me ask you something. Is this just something that's happening and the world is just going to go on forever and we're just put up with it? Or are we in a time of history, do you think we're in a time of history, where we might need to think about the return of the Lord or prophetic events and things like that? Or are we just like going to continue on for the next 10,000 years and nothing changes. I think a lot of people think we're just going to continue on like the same path and like history is just going to continue repeating itself. But the more history continues like repeating itself, the more we're just going to get like in good and evil, good and evil, like black and white. And I really think that we are getting to the end. Like, like you said during church, it's like the dress rehearsal for like all that's going to happen. Like there will be times where it's going to feel like, you know, we're just in the same thing over and over again. But we have to accept, like, what's going on and see what's in front of us. Or we're just going to continue to give into the lies. Give into the- That's good. So let me give you guys a perspective here. And I don't want to get into politics because, like you said, okay, uh, people can get so caught up in politics uh, that we miss really seeing Jesus. And by the way, for those of you who are watching, the book of Revelation that we'll get into is not just about future events. And by the way, it's not the book of Revelations. <laughs> it is the book of Revelation. But what, it is, what is it a revelation of? It's, it's revelation of Jesus. Okay, this is what we're looking for. We want to see Christ. We want to see the Lord. And oftentimes we get caught up in current events, but how do we see Jesus in the context of current events. So, so two things. Just the other day, there was this um, news article that came out. Kamala Harris, the vice president, was interviewing um, a bunch of kids 
about uh, space and other things. And come to find out, they were child actors. They, uh, they weren't just kids from any classroom. They were staged. Come to find out, we've just learned that Joe Biden has his own White House set to make us think he's in the White House. I found this stuff. You know, he did his vaccination, and it looked like he was in the White House, but he wasn't. He was on this set. And I get that, you know, for production purposes, you may want to have the lighting right. You can't always do that in the White House. I understand all that, but seriously, we're really watching an alternate reality right now in a lot of ways. And we're watching uh, a movie screen, kind of. You know, have you ever felt like that? Uh, like, like we're watching this movie screen, but, but you step back for a minute and you say, um, is this real? Or is it somebody's reality that they want to make us think is real? Or, as often has been said, the narrative. What is the current narrative? What does everybody want us to think and start talking like, I, I feel like sometimes that um, everybody wants us to all be alike and think alike and talk alike and just, just, just everybody agree. You know, we'll just, but the problem with that is that um, you guys probably weren't required to read this book when you, you've been in school. Anybody read the book 1984? Probably not. Okay, because I'm really showing my age now, right? So this was before 1984. We were always required in school to read this book by George Orwell called 1984. Um, and uh, it is almost like this alternate reality that he's writing about that is going to come to pass uh, in some future. He had 1984. We're in 2021. We're starting to see um, some of this literally mind control, or an attempt at it to get us to think one way so that we all start talking and, and thinking alike. So, guys, pull out your Bibles for a minute. And uh, I want us to go to uh, Matthew's Gospel, um, chapter number 24. And does anybody remember uh, what Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel 24, chapter 24? Anybody recall some specific words that Jesus might have said? Oh, let me put it in context, too. It might help us. Uh, they had just come from the temple grounds. And you understand the temple grounds were like uh, almost a 40-acre building that uh, Herod the Great had manufactured for the Jews to sort of... Uh, make them feel good about him. Uh, and there's this, this massive structure that took uh, many, many years to build and complete. Eventually, it would take about 40 years to build it. And Jesus one day walks out and he says to his disciples, you see, you see all these buildings here? It would be like going to downtown Charlotte. Okay? Jesus saying, you see all these buildings here? There's coming a time that not one stone will be left upon another. I mean, that, that was a shock. Okay. And then the disciples, they'll, they'll ask him, ah, uh, when is this going to happen? What's going to be the sign of your coming? And, and Jesus will make a statement in verse 4 of chapter 24. Watch out. Watch out. Be careful that no one deceives you. Okay. That's a big deal. Because I feel like, and we're going to not just feel these things, we're going to prove them as we work through our time together, that there's a lot of deception happening. Do you guys feel like that? Um, that there's just a lot of like, mm, it looks one way, but it appears maybe it's another way, okay? And you guys are young, so you, how many of you are in public school, okay? You're in public school, um, you graduated? Um, oh, okay, all right. Uh, you, you guys are homeschooled, you guys, you guys are uh, public school, homeschool. Let me ask you, 
Um, this, this is a good point because um, there is a real move across America right now to get kids out of the public school system um, because of the wackiness. Okay, anybody know what CRT is? Critical race theory? Okay, um, that, uh, that's an alternate reality that makes everybody think that, oh, we're all racist. I refuse to let somebody label me like that uh, because that's just not the case. And I refuse to be labeled like that. And a lot of families are pulling their, their kids out of the public school system just because of, of a lot, you know, that is taking place. When you talk to your friends, okay, you guys do have friends, right? No friends, okay. Yeah, okay. When you talk to your friends, do you get the same sense from them or do you get like, ah, oh, it's not that big a deal? What are your friends saying when you talk to your friends? Or do they even bring the subject up or do they even care? They don't talk about it, really. They don't talk about it. Okay. So are they even aware of, like, Jesus? <laughs> okay. Um, you'd say no? I would say, like, they're Christians, but they're, like, in, like, Baptist legalistic churches, so they look past <gasps> everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did you want to say? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you're, so I'm you school. are the lone public school kid here, okay? <laughs> yes. So what, what's going on with the, the um, students that you're hanging out with? I mean, like, like she said earlier, like, everybody's just blinded. Like, they don't even see that, like, all this stuff that's being said, all of this, like, even what we learn in classes, it's like, some of it, I'm like, what? Like, why am I learning about this? But it's like, they don't even see anything wrong with it. It's just like, it's been brainwashed that it's fine. Like, it's normal. But obviously it's not. I don't know. So do you guys think that we're being, do you guys think that we're headed down a road that is actually taking us somewhere that has an agenda to it or it's just life? Yeah, for sure. For sure what? Yeah. It's just life or we've, there's an agenda? It's definitely an agenda. I mean, like you were talking about the, the set that he has. Like, mm -hmm. obviously that must be a part of an agenda because what else is the other point of having a set to do public speaking? Mm -hmm. You know? So, there's something called Agenda 21. All right. Does anybody know what Agenda 21 is? Okay. So Agenda 21 was the result of the Earth Summit that was held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 1992. Okay. That's important. That date's important because it was in 1991 when the current president, uh, George Bush, began talking about a new world order. And um, it might be a good idea just for us to take a look at uh, Mr. Bush speak those words right now because I want you to see what he said and why what I'm getting ready to tell you matters. So, he's talking about this Agenda 21, right? This was 1991, and so 178 governments got together in 1992, and they agreed on 17 action steps to supposedly improve conditions for the human race around the world, right? So on the surface, it looks like a helpful um, thing to make the earth better, right? But a deeper examination starts to bring into focus, watch this. Now, this plan started in 1992, to bring into focus forced vaccinations, okay, which require a virus type of event, uh, LGBTQIA rights, and climate change legislation. Okay, how much how much are we hearing about climate change right now? Okay, a lot. Okay, and the Earth is warming, and the Earth is going to be destroyed if if we don't do something about it. Sustainable development, which is kind of a code word for limiting carbon emissions. In other words, 
we don't need to have, and this has been one of the things that have been stated by government leaders, we need to do completely away with fossil fuels and oil and gas and other things. We all need to go electric or ride bikes or something like that. And listen, I'm all for riding bikes, but when you hear the word, word sustainable development, you'll notice in cities now they are creating bike paths, places for people to ride their bikes. That's great, right? It is, except that the ultimate goal is to move us away from driving vehicles because we certainly can't have exhaust from a vehicle that is um, creating holes in the stratosphere of our environment, right? Um, Eventually, what this is going to do, it's going to reduce our ability to lead as a nation on energy production. Um, and it includes the eventual elimination of plastic, doing away with responsible tree harvesting, which is going to increase construction costs. You may not be aware of it, but we're in some planning of some construction projects right now. Construction costs are going off of, out of the roof, Okay. Um, and better human rights, which really means limiting Christian positions, which seem restrictive in favor of a code word called tolerance, which is actually legitimization. Okay? Um, Agenda 21 includes lobbying world political leaders to get them on board or face public ridicule, lies, impeachment. Anybody heard of that word lately? and destruction of any future government or financial influence. It is about world domination by a select few, um, and you may have heard this word in school, the aristocracy versus the proletariat. The aristocracy, who are the, the people that know how to tell everybody else what to do, they're the wealthy, and the rest of us, the proletarians, that just do what everybody else says. Okay? Um, the rest of the world who cannot think for ourselves. By the way, can I just make a statement here to those of you that are listening? I can think for myself. Okay? I don't need somebody to hold my hand. And I'm not looking to the latest news event or what the CDC or somebody else is doing so I know how to live my life. Okay? I can think for myself. Can you guys think for yourself? Yes. Hey. Um, and... What's interesting about this is that the ultimate goal is that no nation will lead as we all must be equal. Um, certainly, no America first agenda, um, as that would be just terrible to those who are in charge. So, I have been accused of being a conspiracy theorist. I don't really believe conspiracies. I think it's all true. <laughs> okay? But let me prove it to you on this. Those of you that are watching right now, if you guys want to do this right now on your phones, why don't we do an experiment right now? Why don't you all go to the UN website on your phones, okay? The United Nations website, okay? And when you get to the United Nations website, or you may be able to just to go to um, Agenda 21, Sustainable Development, okay? However you want to um, want to word it in there, um, and you're going to see the goals of uh, the United Nations. Has anybody found it yet? Okay. Oh, look at that right there. Okay. So, and then um, they may have it under a different title. They may have it under Agenda 21. They may have it under Sustainable Development. Um, they may have it under specific goals, um, action goals for um, the world. Okay. Um, and these are 17 action steps that the United Nations is now organizing in order to be able to implement these 17 steps. And what's interesting about this, the key number is, year is 2030. They want to have all of this done by 2030. Okay? Why is that important? Well, it was two or three years ago, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, better known as AOC, said, we only have like 12 years left. What is she talking about? Okay, Joe Biden, a year or so ago, made the statement and said, we only have nine years left. What are they talking about? Nobody thinks it's important to ask that question, right? And just the other day, Actually, I read the news article yesterday, okay? 
the governor of North Carolina has declared a bunch of forward steps to reduce carbon emissions and other energy stuff in North Carolina to be fully in place by what year, did he say? Guess. 2030. Why 2030? Because it falls in line with Agenda 21. Okay? This is the reason, and I'm not being political here, I'm just being factual. This is the reason why the election of Donald Trump caused such controversy among so many people was because it threw a wrench in the timeline of getting everything together so it could be ready to roll by 2030. Okay. I mean, we're living in this right now, guys. Okay. And so what are we supposed to do about it? Okay, so we can sit and we can complain um, which we're really good at. Uh, we can sit and yell, which we're really good at. Um, I've never found that yelling at the government accomplished very much. Okay, it just doesn't work. As a matter of fact, you don't see the New Testament believers doing that. Okay, they had a different approach. So what are we supposed to do? Because there are things happening. There are political, social, and spiritual agendas that are currently happening in front of our eyes. Okay. So what are we supposed to do? So we turned to the book of Revelation. And we begin to see that Jesus has some instructions for us. Now, those of you that have been um, with us during the Revelation series, I'm going to quiz you right now, okay? So, it's a multiple choice. No, it's a, it's a one question, true or false, true or false. In general, does the book of Revelation tend to follow a chronological order? True or false? True. Oh, good. <laughs> Woo! Okay, good. Okay. Second question. You're, you're at 100% right now. Okay. Second question. Does the book of Revelation speak a clear word to the church? Yes. Okay. It's okay if you're wrong, but the answer is yes. Okay. Number three. Is the book of Revelation a story just about future events, or is it the story of how Jesus fulfills history? Okay, it is. Okay. Um, so if we go to Revelation chapter 1, um, and those of you that are watching right now, if you want to do that, the outline of the book of Revelation is actually found in chapter 1. And this is a vision now that John has that Jesus appears to him and begins to talk to him. I, I remember I was on a flight one time and I was discussing actually Revelation with a lady. And she says, oh... My pastor says that John was an old man. And he's probably like, you know, not real together. Maybe he's got dementia. Uh, and so he's writing all this stuff, and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. He's an old man now. Just, I just want to clarify to every one of us here. The scriptures are inspired by the power of the Holy Spirit. John is writing what he sees in a vision. And everything he writes 
is not because he was an old man. It was because he is getting supernatural understanding and guidance and revelation. Are we all in agreement there? Okay. Um, revelation 1, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, which must soon... Okay, that's another word. Well, this was written 2,000 years ago. Not, it's not soon. It's not true. What is the word soon there? Does anybody remember what the word soon there means? Yes. It means quickly. So once it begins to happen, it's going to come to pass very quickly. Okay? Uh, which must quickly take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything that he saw. Blessed is... Ah, here's a blessing. Guys, you're getting ready to get blessed, okay? Okay, those of you listening, getting ready to get blessed. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. How many of you need a blessing? Okay, I do. Okay, so this is what we're going to have here. As we work through this series, we're going to be blessed. And it is a word if you read about this. It's not just something about future events. He says, I'm going to talk to the churches. So Jesus is trying to let the churches know some things, okay? And then he talks about Jesus, grace and peace to him uh, who was, uh, who is, who was, and who is to come. This is Jesus. And he goes on to describe the Lord. And then he says, look, he's coming with clouds. Every eye is going to see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. That's, that's amazing, okay? So John, um, he's a prisoner. He's on an island called Patmos off the coast of the Aegean Sea, which is off the coast of modern-day Turkey. He's there because of his spiritual influence, okay? The Roman emperor said, I've got to move this guy out. I'm going to put him somewhere where he's not going to be trouble. And what they tried to do, they tried to kill John. You guys remember this? Remember how they tried to kill John? How did they try to kill John? Anybody remember? They threw him in a pot of boiling oil. Did you have that? Yeah, okay, good. I did tell you that. They threw him in a pot of boiling oil, but he wouldn't die. There's a miraculous deliverance. And so they send him off to this island called Patmos. He's with other prisoners um, that are there. And he says, I'm here because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And the Lord says to him in chapter 1, verse number 11, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the churches. So again, I want you to understand the book of Revelation is a word to the church so the church knows what to do, knows what is coming, and knows who they're supposed to be looking for. We're not supposed to be looking for an antichrist or the next president or prime minister or king. We're supposed to be looking for Jesus. You guys agree with that? Okay. He, he names the seven churches, which we'll mention um, and he turns around to see the voice talking with him. He has this massive vision of Jesus. Uh, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I were dead. Yeah, I probably would too. Okay, he placed his right hand on him and said, don't be afraid. Okay, right now. Now, here's the outline of the book. Okay, and this is why that we believe the book of Revelation is chronological. Verse 19, right what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. What he has seen is some of the things in chapter 1. What is now is the age of the churches, which is actually Revelation 2 and 3, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, uh, Thyatira, Sardis, Laodicea, and Philadelphia. Okay? What is now? And it's the word of the church, now. So what is now? And then the things which will take place later. Okay, so things that haven't happened yet. And then he points something out here, and I want you guys to see this before we wrap up this first session. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. What in the world is that? The seven stars are the angels and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Okay, the seven stars are the angels. Okay, two interpretations of this. Number one, that... Angels actually oversee churches. That's significant. There's also the interpretation that it refers to the leadership of those churches. Okay. I think I can walk a little further. I think I can um, go another day. 
when I know that I'm actually in the hand of Jesus. Okay? And that there's actually supernatural entities that are watching over God-established churches. That ought to be like, ah, oh, really? Yeah, because there's an unseen world. Those of you that are watching, there is an unseen world. Okay? Then he says the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Okay, and it says that Jesus is walking in the middle of the seven lampstands. Okay, so have any of you ever seen a problem in any church? Anybody ever seen problems before? Okay, let's be honest about it, okay? Um, have you ever read stories about uh, church leaders that do bad things or certain things that happen in churches? You ever read stuff like that? Okay, listen to this. And then you, you have all of these people that criticize the church, and yet listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, I'm in the middle of it all. I'm still in the middle of my church. Now, he's going to call them to change some things. But look, if Jesus is in the middle of his church, then regardless of some issues and struggles that there might be from time to time, I think that it's okay to be in the middle of his church and we'll work through the issues together. Everybody believe that with me? All right. So we're through Revelation chapter 1. We didn't get very far, guys, but we're going we're gonna to work on it, okay? I want you to hang out with us because there'll be part 2, 3, and 4, and others as we work through the book and see exactly what Jesus wants his church to know. We'll see you next time on Midweek Talks.